Our next speaker is a software guy who is sick of trying to make that sound interesting at parties. The four, the four is silent. Please welcome Ryan Brace. Our Earth is round and our maps are flat. This has been a problem for thousands of years. I've got no grand vision and no call to action. We're just going to look at some maps and how they kind of fail us. <laughs> if you're into maps, or if you're socially normal but watch season two of The West Wing, or almost socially normal but follow XKCD, you know that a flat map is a poor representation of a curved Earth. A flat map works fine when you're going from here to there in a car on a human bladder timeline. You're looking at a five inch screen and it's zoomed in on you. But a map that shows a lot of the Earth has even straight lines looking curved. A flat representation of a curved surface necessarily distorts. <laughs> Sorry. Gauss proved that, but it's obvious to anyone who's tried to flatten an orange peel or give a basketball as a gift. If you get area right, size is wrong. Size right, distance is wrong. This is the Mercator projection. It's a map for people who don't give a shit. It, it came out in the 1500s. It's, it makes things at German latitude look good. It's good for going east-west. It's terrible at the poles. If you take a country and move it to a different latitude on a Mercator map, you can't even recognize it. Trying to slide it back where it's supposed to go becomes a fun and challenging puzzle. But misunderstanding the shape of countries affects us. It's why the true size of Africa goes viral on Facebook. On a Mercator map, Africa and Greenland are the same size, but Africa is 14 times larger. But people won't stop making flat maps of the whole Earth because they can be shown on TV. So the best we can do is understand which lie the cartographer chose to tell. Are they lying about area or about position or about location or distance? From the huge variety of map projections, we can see that a lot of mathematicians and geographers think they found the right trade-off, or the right one for a specific situation, and that they really like naming things after themselves. <laughs> Whenever you've got a lot of mathematicians and geographers who think they have the best projection, you need a way to compare them. Here we see the Mercator projection, the projection everyone loves to hate, and the Peters projection overlaid. The red and green is where they disagree. In 1859, Tissot came up with a clever way to show the distortion of maps. Imagine that the surface of the Earth is covered with perfect circles. When you do your projection, the circles will go bigger or smaller or get stretched out into ellipses. But identifying a perfect circle is hard. Which one's really round? On this projector, probably none of them. <laughs> Not so with human faces. We're neurologically hardwired to identify any skew, asymmetry, or imperfection in a human face. <laughs> the slightest deviation from the norm, and suddenly things start to look monstrous. <laughs> this was cleverly used in a 1921 book to show the projection, the effects of various projections, with some pen and ink drawings. Here you can see the Mercator projection in the bottom right. It's a really distended human. But this doesn't feel viscerally wrong like a distorted human photograph does. A Japanese roboticist came up with the term uncanny valley to describe the deep feeling of unease you get when something is almost but not quite right as a human. To take, to take advantage of that, we need a grid of perfect human faces, which TV provides. <laughs> if you take the Bradys and use them like to sew in circles on the globe, you'll be able to see the skew in a way that's a little more noticeable. Jan might look right, but Marsh is distended like the scream. <laughs> Fortunately, someone at NASA did the hard work and wrote software that lets you take any image and overlay it or run it on any of hundreds of projections. They thought we'd be using satellite imagery, but 1970s TV works too. Here we see the Brady Mercator projection. <laughs> the, the Bradys at the equator are the correct size. Notice that the North American Bradys are huge oversized fakes. There is no elliptical distortion on these Bradys, though. It's strictly a size lie that the Mercator map tells. This is the Winkle triple projection. This is the compromise projection selected by National Geographic in 1992. 
Notice that no braid is too big or too small. Some are skewed, but they're not really skewed until you get to the edge. This is a pretty good compromise projection. I promise no call to action, and I meant it. The only takeaway is when you look at a map of the world, ask yourself which lie the cartographer chose. Also, get a globe, but not one with a dent like my globe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ryan.